Vitamin B1 is critical to our survival. Vitamin B1 is called theamine, and this should not be confused with thiamine, the nucleotide base of DNA. Without theamine, our bodies would not be able to metabolize carbohydrates. In addition, our nervous systems would suffer damage. Diseases that result from theamine deficiency are Korsakoff syndrome and beriberi. People with Korsakoff syndrome suffer memory loss, and sometimes they can even fill in these gaps of memory loss with false memories, a process called confabulation. Those suffering from the disease beriberi will often fall down, lose coordination, and the disease can eventually lead to the death of the patient. Finding a cause to the disease beriberi was critical to the Japanese Navy in the late 19th century. In 1883, a Japanese physician named Takaki Kanahiro discovered that nearly half the crew on a long Navy mission fell ill with beriberi, but the officers did not fall ill. He also knew that Western navies did not suffer from beriberi the way the Japanese Navy did. He surmised that this was due to diet. The officers had a wide variety of foods available to them, but the crewmen typically only ate white rice. So he suggested that on a new Navy mission, the crew be offered a wide variety of foods. And this led to a dramatic decrease in the occurrence of beriberi. But the policy was not implemented throughout the rest of the fleet due to its high cost and because many doctors at the Imperial Tokyo University maintained that the disease was caused by germs and not by a food deficiency. At around the same time, Christian Eichmann traveled to Java in modern-day Indonesia, and there he did experiments with chickens where he fed the chickens only white rice. The chickens then developed symptoms of beriberi, but when they were fed whole brown rice, the chickens began to recuperate. His colleague Adolf Vorderman continued the research on Java. He knew that beriberi was common in some prisons, but not in others. When he took notes of the history of what the prisoners were being fed, he found that in prisons that fed the prisoners only white rice, one in 39 of them had developed beriberi, whereas in prisons that fed brown rice, only one in 10,000 prisoners developed beriberi. This led to the realization that there was something in the shell of brown rice that contained some compound which prevented beriberi. Eventually it was discovered that vitamin B1 was contained in the shell of the rice but not in the white rice. In the modern day, vitamin B1 deficiency is quite rare, but it can happen under a certain set of circumstances. For example, alcoholics are much more likely to develop vitamin B1 deficiency. Also, people who have gotten bariatric surgery or a stomach size reduction surgery have been known to develop vitamin B1 deficiency. Vitamin B1 deficiency can also be a consequence of chemotherapy. Many countries now fortify grain products with vitamin B1 because things like white rice and white flour don't contain the vitamin. Whole grains, however, do contain the vitamin. But since many people don't eat whole grains, vitamin B1 is added to white flour and white rice. Unlike vitamin A, which can become toxic if too much is consumed, vitamin B1 does not become toxic. In fact, there is no toxic level of vitamin B1. So if you're going to try a new diet, it can't hurt to supplement vitamin B1. Well, that's all I have to say about vitamin B1. I hope you liked the video and thanks for watching.